Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be testing out a bit of a different type of art tool, although it's arguably one of the most important light. I know it's something that probably isn't thought about as much as paint or brushes, but having good lighting when you're working on your artwork is extremely important. I'm sure I don't really need to elaborate as to why, but you probably don't want to be putting yourself in a situation where you could accidentally grab bright orange paint when you should be using red for that portrait. So today we're going to be trying out what might be the ultimate art light, the BenQ e-reading lamp that is in this giant box that definitely is not going to fit well on camera. Now this is one of those slightly infamous products that I've always been incredibly intrigued by but have never actually bit the bullet to get one and try it out because admittedly this is a pretty bougie light but it's got a ton of really interesting and unique features. So when BenQ reached out to me asking if they could send me one of these to try out it was an immediate yes. Now, even though this was sent to me the stipulation was genuine opinions only so if I really hate this light you're about to know. Anyway that's enough for this intro let's actually start getting into this light. Now my studio was designed to function to be a lot of things, but an unboxing channel was not one of them, so please excuse the slightly awkward unboxing footage here because this was quite a large box. In terms of the box, it was packaged incredibly well, not too bulky, but still very well protected, and it had this really awesome feature of the handle to help you get the styrofoam out of the box, which I really appreciated because those things can be incredibly annoying to try and tackle on your own. The first thing in the box was of course the instruction manual and tool. It comes with this hex key and that's all you actually need to assemble this light. So a really easy process. Of course the rest of the instruction manual just goes over all of its features. Next in the box was the power adapter. And then of course you have the base, which honestly probably makes up about 70% of the entire box weight. It is so heavy, but that's a great sign because it means this light is absolutely not going to tip over. And last out of the box is of course the actual light mechanism. So this has the cord attached and this particular light is the silver color. So the cord is silver to match it. It's this fabric wrapped cord. And here's what the silver upper part of the light looks like. It's actually called galaxy silver, which is very pleasing to me, of course. For assembly of this light, all you need to do is place the main light mechanism onto the base and then tighten this bolt on the back and that's it. You're good to go. Your light is all assembled. It says not to lift the lamp from the neck, but I did it just to show that it was very secure for the purposes of this video. And after that, all you need to do is plug in the power adapter to the fabric cord, plug it into an outlet, and there is your working light. This light has a ton of adjustment and posability options. There is a swivel point on the base, and then of course, pivot points between the two arm aluminum joint parts. The light part itself is actually on a ball joint, which is pretty unique, and I really like it because it means you can adjust the light itself a ton. But my favorite part might have to be that it has a touch on and off control system. It's so satisfying and convenient, as well as this knob, which adjusts both the temperature of the light as well as the brightness. Clicking the knob will toggle between the two options. Again, super simple and convenient to use. It also has two preset modes built in that you can activate by holding on to the on off ring. They're called screen reading mode and book reading mode and to go back to your normal adjustment you just click the knob. Here's a look at the full range of adjustment for the light. This is between the brightest the light goes to the dimmest setting, and then clicking the knob, I will show you the coldest the light temperature can be adjusted to, to the warmest. So there's a lot of variance between the color. It works off of a two LED system. So when you want it to be daylight, it is a mixture of the warm LEDs and the cool LEDs. And the reason I'm fairly awkwardly filming my hand here is to show you the sort of shadow that the light can cast. So pretty minimal and definitely not as intense as a lot of other lights. 
Over the past few days of having the light, I've really tried to put it to every possible test that I would use it for. Like, even right now, it is the only light that I'm filming with other than my pegboards that are lit up behind me, but it's like pitch black in my studio other than that, so I guess we will see how spooky this <laughs> light might make me look right now. I tried filming a bunch of different like test footage clips and videos. I actually used it for some product photography as well to see what it would look like. Of course, using it right now is like my main light for the this talking head portion of the video. I even found myself having it turned on when I was using my iPad just so that there was a bit more ambient light in my pitch black room. Of course, you don't technically need to have a light on when using an iPad because the screen lights up, but because I could turn the brightness down, it was just nice to have a bit more light on my desk. Which speaking of, this thing lights up my entire desk area and really evenly as well. I would guess that it's that curve shape. It just really fans out over my whole desk, which is quite a long desk. It's like a kitchen tabletop, so it's longer than most desks and it literally goes to any portion of the desk that I would possibly work at. So that is awesome. I also really like that it is a base lamp, like it's not something that attaches to the side of the desk like a lot of other studio art lamps that a lot of people would use, you know, for studio lighting have like the C-clamps that, you know, you attach to the side of the table. An old light that I used to use all the time and I gave to my mom to use when she's sewing had that and it would just drive me insane because you couldn't move it easily. It was always just seemingly in the way. It just was not a very practical thing for me, so I know it's a simple thing, but this being on a base, it does appear like you can get different attachment. I know there's a floor attachment, and it does look like there is like a C-clamp, so if you are someone that prefers that, then that option is available, but for me, I really like that it is like an actual base because I have actually moved this over like closer to using it behind me. Like this desk section, uh, I airbrush a lot at and do a lot of like prop work on that desk. And so I wanted to try using it for that as well because all of the prop work that I'm doing is trying to replicate screen accurate stuff, so color accuracy, very important. So wanted to try out the fancy art light for that as well, and it was awesome. And being able to just move it over there to be able to reach over to that portion to use it was like game changing compared to the headache of having to like try and move like a C clamp over there would be. And the base is not incredibly obscene. It's an eight and a half inch like diameter circle or about an eight and a half inch diameter circle. So it's really, really heavy. So it's not about to tip over in any universe, but it's not like this ginormous disc that ends up being in the way. In terms of the other features, I really don't change the temperature too, too much. I kind of have like a three to four twist notch range that I really like. Again, because I'm filming, I really want to keep it as close to daylight as possible. So in that really in-between range, sometimes I want it a little cooler, sometimes I want it a little warmer, but I'm really not going to the like polar opposite directions. If you weren't using this, like it's branded as an e-reading light, which a bit strange because everyone that I've seen use this is an artist, but if you were using it as like a multi-purpose light, even if it was like your art light and it just happened to be somewhere where you would also possibly read, then I could see you maybe using that temperature adjustment a lot more. A lot of people would prefer reading with like very warm toned lights because it's less harsh on your eyes, but for me personally, it's a very tight range. I use the brightness a lot though. I think right now it's actually at its dimmest setting, which is pretty insane because it is lighting me up quite well without like killing my eyes. But I do mess around with the brightness a lot more than I mess around with the color temperature. I still like having the option though. The only weird thing that I wanted to mention, which I found out when I was doing some chord management because I of course just plugged it in to make sure everything was working and of course for the video, but then I wanted to tuck the cord around my desk so it wasn't just in the middle of everywhere. But when you you unplug the light when the power goes out, say, it reverts itself to some like sort of preset. So if you like using the light at a certain color temperature and brightness and the power goes out, 
it turns itself back on at this predetermined incredibly warm in my opinion light so that's a bit weird it's not like the end of the world because it is really easy with the knobs to adjust it back to where you wanted it at but if you're someone like me where it's plugged in right now I would possibly unplug it to plug something else in if I wasn't using it because I'm kind of tight for outlets <laughs> over there it would mess up my light settings and it also turns the light on even if it's off and I haven't had the power go out or anything and I haven't tried it and I probably should have done that to see if it will turn itself back off or if the power goes out it will just leave itself on because even if the light is off it turned on when I unplugged it but that was really like the only weird thing. Other than that, I really like the controls on it. The only thing that I could kind of see, which I was having to get used to, is the on-off circle thing that's on the end. It's designed in a way that you really kind of want to grab that to adjust the light and I know in the instructions it says don't do that but also you wouldn't want to do it because you would just keep on turning your light on and off as you're adjusting the ball joint of the lamp so you probably don't want to like accidentally have a rave going on on your table with the light flickering on and off all of the time but that's just something to get used to just adjusting it holding on to the physical light, which all of the different adjustment points are quite easy to adjust. They're not flimsy like this thing. If I like poke at it, it's not gonna like accidentally change its position. It's a very sturdy and well-made lamp. Still, the one thing that kills me about this light is the price tag. It is a very expensive light. It would possibly be one of the most expensive lights that you would ever see like it. That being said, if for some reason this light died tomorrow, I would probably go out and buy it again. In fact, I'm probably going to end up with a second one because my workshop is under construction. I'm going to need a light down there and I like this one so much that I have a feeling I'm going to miss it if I don't get another one for down there. So I'm probably going to end up actually buying one because even though it is more expensive than the other sort of lights that you would look at to purchase for an art studio and painting, the features that this has that the others don't, to me, are worth the extra money. You know, the combination of the brightness adjustment, which I do use all of the time, the light color adjustment is really useful because it is somewhat of a personal preference as to what you might like that set at, and I know from past experience the more traditional drawing and painting lights, the color temperature that they are at is blue that skews a little green, which really can mess up what you're painting. And the daylight ones that do have a reasonable color adjustment are just obscenely bright and not at all like a nice even lighting. I'm gonna get real scientific on you for a moment, but the curve of the light obviously fans out the lighting really evenly, but then because the actual plastic casing of the LEDs is ribbed. The light refracts all over the place and so it really is nice even lighting. Like way more even than I was expecting something like this to be because it doesn't have any like frosting or diffusion on it. Like it really is right there pretty much. As I stare into the light it is pretty bright even at its dimmest setting. I, mean, I guess there is like a little bit of diffusion but the ridges that are actually on the casing which hopefully I will get some footage where you can see it helps the light refract all over the place and it gets a really nice even lighting and most other art lights that I have at least tried is not the case. They are very intense and so they create really bad shadows which is a problem of course if you're just not even if you're filming just if you're working and you're trying to draw something and this say the shadow of the pencil is right where you're trying to draw that's a massive issue because you're not going to be able to see anything that you're doing which of course at that point you could possibly minimize that by getting two of whatever light you're using but then you're getting up there possibly more than this light is on its own. So I guess that's something to consider all on its own. Like if this particular light that yes is less expensive than this light, but then you need two of them to get a nice even lighting, that's obviously twice the cost. So is twice the cost more or less than this light that on its own is even lighting. Another thing, not that it's particularly applicable since it's November in Ontario, but it does not give off 
heat, which is definitely not the case for a lot of other lamps, depending on the kinds of bulbs that they use. The one daylight light that I did use for many years had like a fluorescent blue toned light and then a secondary like traditional incandescent bulb. What are those things? Like a non-LED, like a really old type of light bulb. And that thing gave off so much heat you could have like used it as a lizard lamp. I felt like the lizard underneath that thing using it. So there's of course the benefit to having an LED light. And of course the LED aspect means you don't have to change light bulbs, which for my studio lights, they do use light bulbs. The light bulbs are 60 or 80 Canadian dollars and it's not fun when something happens to them or it just dies because I use them so frequently. So that is another cost that you are not having to worry about with this light. So I'm sure you can tell I do really like this light. I obviously wish it wasn't as expensive as it is, but that being said, I do think that the unique features that it has are worth upgrading to something like this as opposed to another type of art light. And I think between the unique features and just generally the aesthetics, because this is by far the best looking painting light that I have seen, the other ones are not quite pleasant. At least most of them are white, so at least it would go with my studio aesthetic. But beyond that, they just are not my jam. And this, other than it being able to come in multiple colors to possibly suit your personal aesthetic and preferences better, just the general shape and minimalist design of everything is nice. It's incredibly nice. And it really does not take up that much room. Like I have a reasonable amount of space on my desk right now, but the neck of the lamp, <laughs> you know, the pieces that are between the base and the actual light itself are very very small. They're like maybe half an inch like cube things or like half an inch by half an inch. They're very very tiny because I know a lot of other lights it's like the tri pole situation that ends up being like a thing like that big by the time you've got all of the mechanisms together there. So it takes up an incredibly small amount of space and can really be tucked into places if you don't have a lot of room. So it is of course an expensive light. I'm pretty sure it's over 300 Canadian dollars. I'm not sure what it would be in the States and you know the whole conversion thing. You might be able to get it cheaper different places. There can be sales on. So it is pretty expensive but it's also one of those like studio investments like once you buy a light you don't need to keep buying lights you know we spend so much money on paint and paper and everything that investing in a light seems like a really reasonable thing to do but those are all of my thoughts on the benq e-reading lamp i would love to know if you have one of these already what you think of it if this is like me one of those items that you've always been interested in trying out of course if you have any questions on something that i just completely forgot to mention in this video please feel free to leave Leave those in the comment section. But yeah, that is everything. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.